don't know what happened. One day, it, it literally was one day. Um, I was like, screw this. I'm going to, I'm going to update the myocarditis paper and like freaking resubmit it. So that's what I did. I, I took the, the idea, the body, and I updated it and it looked even worse. <laughs> and I uh, added- but, but when you say it looked even worse, you mean the data and the conclusions? Yeah. So I had way more data. Think about this. I have like two years more data. Uh, so I had a lot more data points. Um, it, it not, not only were the, the original points more solid as a rock, but I had more data to draw conclusions about what was going on in terms of severity. So that's the really important thing about the newly updated version that, that's now been really published, um, is that we, we show not only that this happens in kids, it happens after dose two, but it's leading to hospitalization in 76% of the time and also to death. So it's, it's definitely not mild and or transient. So that's what I would say is like the most important thing about um, this new paper. Uh, it's unfortunate that it came two years too late. And uh, well, it, see, I, I was gonna say unfortunate, but almost necessary because you know, other than uh, the passage of time and more data, uh, what's also clear is that public opinion or the, the uh, what's the word when you get chastised into not talking, the stigma about talking about it is certainly gone because it's undeniable now. Yeah. So it's almost like the, the, the scientific environment is more amenable to even having the discussion because it's so bloody in your face and undeniable. Whereas two years ago, it was shut up, continue with the rollout because we got 6 billion of these to administer. So the, the, the culture has changed. And we're going to yeah. get into the data. So this one is peer reviewed or re peer reviewed or peer re reviewed. Oh, oh man, this, this is peer reviewed multiple, multiple, multiple times because the number of times that it got rejected after going through multiple rounds of peer review with different journals, <laughs> we're documenting that we've documented that. So uh, Nick Holster is, is an additional author on this paper. And he, he really is to, uh, he's the one responsible for this thing getting published because he's, uh, he, he was very, very good at getting this through and making sure, you know, the revisions were made properly, blah, blah, blah. Um, so th this got, this paper has been going through peer review in different journals and getting rejected at the last minute for months. So this final paper that accepted it is, is one of, so it's been through the washer. So anyone who want to say, you know, it's not peer reviewed is, <laughs> yeah, it's peer reviewed. A lot of years. And, and with, with, with that thorough uh, introduction, and if I decide to snip and clip this portion where you're going to explain the data to YouTube and they can, you know, accept my fingers if they decide to pull it down. Uh, let me pull up the, the, the study and we're going to go through, why do I see court filings here? Because that's okay, fine. Um, Jess, I'm going to, I'm going to pull it up. I'll go to the top and you'll, you'll walk us through the findings. Maybe I don't need it up here the, the entire time to, um, to go through the findings, but I'll just read the, well, what do I want to do? background so let's go to the figures okay because that's that's what most people are going to uh respond to anyway tell me we where that just, is oh just keep going results Here's one so yeah go to figure. figure one figure one is this yes okay so, now if I, okay I can't, this tells I'll, I'll the story it. of the adverse events in VARES in total over the last 30 years so this is basically a comparison of the total number of adverse event reports filed to VAERS. This is all adverse events, not just myocarditis, yeah. for all vaccines combined until 2021, when I pulled out only the adverse event reports in the context of the COVID products. So this, this chart is really important to set the stage because it's, you know, so there are a lot of Prior to all of the gray is all vaccines ever, which includes the annual flu shot. Yes. Okay. And then the purple is only the COVID shots and yes. only the adverse events reported in conjunction with the COVID shots. Yes. Okay. And now the question that people ask, these are the raw numbers that at the total, not a percentage of, no. uh, well, okay. No, so these are the, 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 the absolute counts. So, and these are people. So I don't count, I know it says adverse event on the left uh, axis, but this is the adverse event in the context of 
people. So I count the number of people who actually reported a multitude of adverse events. If I was going to talk about the number of adverse events per person, th this would be like in the 5 million range. So it's this, this is an important point because VAERS is a, um, it's a database for real people who are suffering sometimes very severe side effects to report their injuries. So each one of these points is a person. Let so, me ask, let me ask another question. The, uh, and just for, for comparison purposes and so we can digest it internally. In 2020, all vaccines, that's the number in gray. How many doses of all vaccines were administered in 2020 prior to the COVID jab? Do you know that offhand or is that, is that? Uh, gonna... I do know, but I don't know it offhand. I mean, it's, it's, it's hundreds of millions because it's like, it's yeah. hundreds of millions of flu shots alone. Well, that's, so, that's where, that's where I want to like it. Just, is it, is it 10 times less? Is it a hundred times less than the COVID jab in 2021? The total number of shots, I don't know. But the, the flu, it, the comparison between 2020 and 2021 is that there were 2.3 times as many COVID shots given out as the flu shots. Okay. So you would, go ahead. No, no, I'm, that, then that answers the question. Two, let's just yeah. say two and a half times more COVID jabs than uh, flu shots. Then you would expect that this little purple bar at most, at most to be two and a half of the little gray That's bars. Right. And the reason why that is, is because... Here, here's the thing, people. If there wasn't something different, inherently different in terms of adverse events between these products and let's just say the flu products, and there was a 2.3 time, 2.3 times as many shots given out for the COVID products, then we would expect 2.3 times or 2.5 times, whatever, uh, as many adverse events because it would be proportional, because the the so-called damages would be equatable. So this is a very clear, just this one thing is a very clear indication that there's something different about these things. So um, a lot of people are saying, nah, it's just because they gave out more shots. No, 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 no. I, I've, it's not in this paper, but I've, I've broken that um, down using napkin math. It's absolutely false. I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm looking now and just, I don't know, it's from the CDC. So 2019 to 2020. 175 million doses of the flu shot. Yeah. And so let's just say COVID shot 2021 number. Oh, I have to go with US, I guess. I'll find it out. But the bottom line is it's, it's simply, you know, if anybody wants to try to write it off and say, well, they administered a hundred times more jabs than flu shots, no. it's simply false. It is. Or it's, and even though they did administer more COVID shots, it's not proportional when we look at the data, like the, the number of reports, like even if this was 20 times, maybe, you know, I'd be like, may, you know, OK, so maybe there's something, some extra immunological component here. But this is really, really different. Mm. This is this is more than an anomaly. Like, <laughs> it's, OK, it's no, it's, it's it, even if they administered three times as many COVID jabs yeah. as flu shots, then it would be 300,000. It would be a proportionate claim. It's exceedingly okay. disproportionate to the amount of doses administered. OK, Very. and that is that is conclusive and indisputable. Yes. And, and just to add to that, um, I, I look deeper into the range of adverse events that are being reported in the context of the flu shots within a given time frame and the range of adverse event reports uh, for the COVID shots in the same number of days time frame. And there's um, a huge discrepancy between the, the number of uh, types. I'm talking about like the diagnoses associated with the shots being given in the context of flu being much narrower than for the COVID shots. So this is very telling. It's, it's literally translated something about these is causing more systemic damage. And it's interesting because that's what we're hearing clinically as well. It's like we're from Bell's palsy to, um, to, to death. I mean, it's, it's, there, there's this huge range of, of clinical pathology associated with these shots. And it's irrespective of age. It's irrespective of, of, well, maybe not irrespective of a precondition, but it's, it's it, it's certainly you're you're not um, you're not immune because you're young, for example. 
um, from it's, suffering adverse events. I'm sorry, I just got very frustrated because I, now I'm looking up in the CDC. Here, let me, let me bring this up, Jess. Uh, I have to toggle a couple of screens here. Stop screen. Just, I mean, just because I, I, I remember getting this number to figure out what the proportion of claims to doses administered was. The yep. total number of doses administered as of as of like beginning to today, 676 million. To, so you, aggr- you you just go break that down. That's the amount of doses given and claims it, uh, made at the Varus. And for whatever you think that they're worth, break it down and you can get your claim per dose. And uh, I forget what it was now, but it was it was significant. That's 676 million over 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024. So let's just say 200 million. And you're, and you're, and you're, you're almost, let's say double, double the flu shot. And so try to make sense of that graph, which we're going to go back to right now. Okay. I'm going to give myself a heart attack here. <laughs> Jess, hold on. Get this back. You're fine. So the next one over B is this exact same concept, except for myocarditis reports. So it's, it's the exact same picture and, and you'd kind of expect it to be because within that um, total number of adverse events, you're going to have, you know, subgroups of cardiovascular reports. And within that, you're going to have myocarditis reports. And in each case, any query that you do for any adverse event um, by Medra code, it, it looks like this. It's, it's not only for myocarditis. So um, it's, uh, it's not something you can look away from. It's, it's Teacher, go ahead. question. Um, I mean, if this is, this is, wildly disproportionate, even if we, you know, even if we're operating on the two and a half times as many doses of the jab administered as the flu, I don't know, as a matter of policy, do they administer to the flu? Do they administer the flu shot to children six months and up? Or did they prior to 2021? I don't know. I I would say no, but I really don't know. I I know almost nothing about uh, (laughs) vaccination anymore. (laughs) No, well, I mean, it's, but the the bottom line is I'm just trying to figure out uh, you know, because you're going to break this down by age bracket and it's going to make a lot more sense the number of claims you're getting. And the question so the I'm majority, asking is... The majority of people who are getting flu shots, yearly flu shots, are older people. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's certainly not It's certainly not been added to the... I don't, as far as I know, the flu shot has not been added to the children's I don't vaccination think so. schedule. So w- when we see this number, and you're going to probably tell us that this number in the red, 2414, is uh, disproportionately within a younger bre- demographic... Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it this this wildly disproportionate graph makes all the more sense, assuming that the flu shot is not mm, forcibly administered to young boys, which I don't think it is. Certainly not by vaccine passports and requirements to enter a library. So that'll explain why this graph is even more disproportionate than the overall VAERS reports year over year, 2020 to 2021. Okay, please continue, Jess. Okay, so go to the C. Um, so what I did, uh, just as an exploratory thing, and because we had so much data when I, when I was looking at this again, um, I downloaded the Our World in Data data for the number of doses administered in the States. Um, so this is, again, you know, it's their data, it's not mine. And then I pulled out the myocarditis cases, um, you know, that have occurred regardless of age for, you know, since the beginning of the rollout, which you can see by indicated by the purple line, you can kind of see when it happened anyway. <laughs> it's like when the blue line starts to go up and you can see it's, it's, I laughed when, when I saw that I see, these are coming from two different places. Okay. This is OID data and VAERS data. And I superimposed them according to the dates of the, um, the data points. And this is what popped out. So it couldn't be more indicative that the the myocarditis in red is tracing the new injections in blue by by what by two weeks it, it's about yeah i think so it was about t- it was about 10 days i think and uh, and i, I got i'm gonna stop you there also because i'm gonna I'll, I'll steal man what i know the liars would say they're gonna say covid uh myocarditis infection myocarditis from viral infection is a very it, you're more likely to get it from covid than the jab if that were true Jessica, and you'll correct me if I... Well, first of all, you, you might not see it on the VAR system, although maybe people are reporting uh, uh, COVID-induced myocarditis as an adverse event from the vaccine because they can't distinguish the two. Exactly. <laughs> but they, we don't see myocarditis being... Re- well, you would not see myocarditis being reported in VAERS until the shots are being administered. Yeah. Okay, fine. I mean, that, that's logical, and that was a stupid that's brain That's the part. thing, okay. right? And so it's not just that, though. It's the fact that it... they. 
you know, they kind of peak at the same place, just a little, little bit after, and then they trough, and then they peak again together, and then they trough. And this is one of the criteria that you should satisfy in the Bradford Hill criteria to provide evidence of causation. It's called reversibility. If you take away the drug, which is the blue, if, if the, the drug is likely causing the myocarditis, then the, or let's just say the, um, the symptom, then the symptom will go away when the drug is removed. And that's exactly what we see here. It's striking. And the R value here, it's not shown, but it's, it's uh, 0.8. I, I did calculate this, which is pretty high, which means what, that- Sorry, what, what does the R value mean? So it's it's a, the, a measure of the correlation between these two curves. So so how well they track together, basically. So I, let me ask you a question here. The, 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 the blue number is tracking um, raw number of new injections, correct? That's why we just see fewer and fewer people getting new injections as we go along. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We, we know now that not many people are are taking these things at all anymore. So it's- yeah. What so the last bump, you know what I was going to say, what explains the last bump without a correlative spike, but then I see a spike. Uh, can you see my cursor? Let me see yeah, you can. Um, so you got a last blue bump right here. And that is in what month are we in there? October. That looks like October, November, December. And then we get in January 2020, a little spike right there. Um, it, it, would, would that be what you would say was a, a you know, a correlation? Um, maybe, but I, I wouldn't be too bothered about, I, I don't know what the bump is actually um, in well, I mean, I know what it is, but a bunch more people. I can't really see the dates. It's um, yeah, it's, it looks like it looks like 10, 10, 1, 2022. So that's uh, October, yeah, November. It's October 1st, 2022. Yeah, so flu, it's flu remember, season. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. Do, do you remember, though, like uh, when when the different versions of these shots were being doled out? Because maybe this represents boosters i don't know well I, I do i do remember they they went with the seasonal push for thanksgiving uh, for thanksgiving and, and the holidays uh, so that's that's the time and then you go back here and you look at this one it's 11 11 1 21 so right about the christmas time new year's yeah. right here yeah. and that's, that's what that's what it, really yeah i didn't even uh you're right that's a good observation yeah and then the first the first one was right after just fucking jack it out into everybody's arms yeah, yeah, yeah. but and, and no because i remember i remember like I, you know uh hokel coming out and you know come with their messages you want to meet with your friends at thanksgiving and christmas get your shots now and i'm like you guys are already too late when they were pushing it it's like it takes two weeks to if it worked it would take two weeks to work you're already too late okay so amazing and fascinating that this it's 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 a it's almost like a direct myocarditis reports and what should be shocking about this number we're going to get into the breakdown of the myocarditis but this this wild uh correlation is going to be disproportionately young young boys yeah. or young men um after the second dose yes so keep going let's 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 scroll, find that here. scroll down here, let me move this out here yeah, i don't, I don't is... remember what uh I did. That's that's you know how, just you know how you know how neurotic I am. I hate seeing that open in viewer thing. I got to toggle. Me them. too. Okay. Me too. <laughs> Sorry. I, and I cut, there it is again. Damn it. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. What what, <laughs> chart, what what chart are we looking at here? Number of adverse event reports in verse. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. So this is just uh, okay. So what are we so looking this at? Is, this is the number of vaccines on the market proportionally uh, uh, related to the number of adverse event reports. So the reason I put this in is just to show people that between 1990, when VARES started, to 2020, everything was copacetic. Yep. It's like linear, linear uh, trend upward. Very, you know, not a not a big slope. Uh, everything was proportional. Well, so I, was, I, was, I was just going to ask you, like, where's the spike? And then I realized that the, the cutoff date is 2020. So I, I suspect yes, the spike is coming. <laughs> the <laughs> no, hockey stick. I, 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 there's no point in showing that. So the, the point was I wanted people to know, like, that to 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 um, to, to bounce off figure one, like, th this is what it used to look like in terms of the number of products on the market. And the reason why we have this steady increase is because of the increase in the number of products getting on the market. Mm -hmm. So... An increase of one more product or four more products, you know, for COVID should not cause any significant rise. It should fall on the the diagonal, you know. So yeah. I don't show that here, but uh, that's that's what would happen. Okay. No, I mean it's logical. If if the correlation of adverse events typically is one in ten thousand, if you have five on the market, you'll have. It'll, you'll, it'll it'll go up like that. Like like what, I don't. I'm curious what the what that little dip is right there. But okay, yeah, interesting. Get a glitch. Where do, where do I go now? I got pulled from the market that year. I bet you that's what it is. Uh, interesting. Um, yeah, we can skip that. 
that's just the classification of the stuff. So here we go. Both of these charts are telling. So the one on the left is the um, the absolute counts, and the one on the right is per 100,000 doses. So the one on the right is normalized per dose. They, they tell the same story, though. So on, on the left, well, we can do the normalized data. Whatever. Uh, that's over here. All right, and let yeah. me just read, let me read what this... Uh, uh, so figure three shows the distribution of myocarditis cases according to the CDC age grouping. In total, 30% of all myocarditis reports were made for children aged 0 to 20, and 50% of all myocarditis reports were made for young adults aged 0 to 30. I'd like to know a sub breakdown, which we're going to get in a second. Absolute counts were normalized to vaccine administration data by age group, figure 3B. 12 to 17 year olds have the highest myocarditis reporting. The, I, I just want to add here that the original uh, data was even stronger than this, because I, I think the reason why it, quote unquote, looks better, even though it's still bad now, is because of data botching in VAERS. Um, but that's a whole other topic. So basically what we're looking at here is the, the, the greatest proportion of reports per dose being reported for 12 to 17 year olds. So within this age grouping, there are the 15 year olds. So they're the ones who are hit the worst and you can't see it here, but uh, the, the boys are doing the worst. I, I, I'm not even sure in the, if I have the boys chart here. Maybe I don't. What, um, if I may ask, the 3.1, uh, what, what number does that represent? It's so number that's of three one cases per 100,000 doses. Okay. So the, the guys attacking us will say, well, who cares? It's only three people per 100,000. But it's like, um, that's not nothing. And when you're talking about something uh, that's considered a serious adverse event in a, in a young person who, who may actually um, succumb to very severe damage, it matters. Like, well, let, no let, let me I, I, let me stop you there just because it's, if you say 3.1 per 100,000, that's roughly one per 33,000. So people are going to say, well, I've, I've heard the stat was myocarditis was one in 800, one in 5,000. Oh, now they're going to say it's one in 33,000, and that's at worst. No, but this doesn't take into account the underreporting factor. So any, any data that I ever present is a huge underestimate. That's just one of the flaws about fares. So, so if at, you at at best, at I best bet. for the for the for, I will, I'm going to call yeah. them the, the data deniers. Yeah. It's at best, it's one in thirty three thousand for at best, yeah. and we and to the extent that many people think the various reporting accounts for one percent of all adverse events, yeah. you can and then the the number for one in eight hundred was actually not pulled from various; it was pulled from trial clinical trial data, mm -hmm. and that's probably a little more accurate. Okay, fine. So just, just under, we'll understand the arguments. They're going to say, oh, look at that. Even by your own numbers, it's one in 33,000. That's nothing. Okay, that doesn't factor in underreporting. And the number of one in 800, one in 5,000 was not pulled from the various reports, but rather from the clinical data, although one study wasn't peer reviewed, apparently. Okay. Uh, keep going down. Let's see. I, I don't remember. It was like years ago. Um, seriously, let's see what I did. Okay, various so this. reports is of myyocarditis by age. And, and dose. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Okay. We guess so, is... yeah, you, you can see already, right? This is what I described. So all I did was I pulled out the, the number of VARES, the, the VARES reports of myocarditis by metric code myocarditis. Um, and I plotted uh, those points against the people's ages. And I superimposed three doses because I wanted to see what was going on. In, in, the, in the initial paper, I only had dose one and dose two data. So I had the, you know, I, I had this picture back in like freaking May. My, 20... minus, minus the blue. Exactly. But I had this picture, this those two response. And it's like, man, what is going it's on? The, it's the fuck. I'm sorry. It's the freaking. Uh, what's the, the, the building in America now uh, in New York? Jeez, the Empire State it's building. the Empire State Building of adverse events. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, it does look like it. Holy yeah. shit. So, so and that, that is to say, these are the reports. And in the reports, they say adverse event. Okay, which number dose are you on? They didn't, people didn't write it. They didn't file the various report on the first dose. They filed it on the second. They, they, they indicated it was the second. And this is the tracking by age. And we're, we're looking at whatever that is halfway about 12 to 25. Bar, that peak bar is 15 year olds. And if you break that down by gender, by sex, 80% 80 80 boys, boys, sorry, uh, what percentage boys, 80 something percent, 80 odd. 
Wow. So quite clearly, physiologically, for whatever the reason, the second dose triggers more adverse event reports. Something more severe. So my line of thinking is like this, and correct me if I'm wrong or if you have other ideas. Um, young boys, like I, I, I kind of like was a young tomboy. So, you know, I played soccer and I, I was a competitive swimmer and I, all my friends were boys. So like if I, I tried to put myself into my, my 15 year old self and I got a, you know, I'm, I'm vaccinated out the yin yang, whatever there was, I got when I was a little older, not really when I was 15, but let's just say this COVID shit happened when I was 15, I probably would have gotten it. Wouldn't have even thought about it. And then all of a sudden, if I started having horrible chest pains within like a few days of the shot, I, I would never, never connect to them. I'm telling you this as a first person. I would never have connected them. And then, of course, it's time to get the next one because it's three weeks later. So I get the second one and then I pass out. And then my mom's there and she's like, what the hell? And it happens in, in closer temporal proximity to the shot, because that's another trend that we see following those two, like the time frame from injection to, to onset is shorter, which is another Bradford Hill thing. So my thinking is that there's more reporting following the second dose because it is more severe. There's something cumulative going on, but also it's it becomes, it's so severe that it's not deniable. So the moms get involved and they take their kids to the doctor. So that's kind of how I was visualizing it. Like, I don't know, maybe there's another reason. Well, but I, I would have, I would have, I mean, for whatever it's worth, just, you know, critical thought, I would have thought it would be a cumulative impact. And, yeah, it is. and, and, and any, any myo, any sort of uh, symptomatic chest pain might be totally, uh, virtually unnoticeable or yeah and and then the cumulative impact right. of having having the, whatever the spike proteins are recirculate and and re-trigger an immunological response and then you get a more severe reaction um yeah it's, it's the, it's the sec the sucker punch that knocks you out it's uh it's another massive dose of lipid nanoparticles carrying foreign genetic material and then more transfection more downstream you know so and you're already probably immunologically inflamed from the first experience. Now, th so it's think, like, thinking out loud, though, uh, do you know the number of second doses administered compared to first doses? Does that number go down? Because that would make yeah. this graph even more shocking. Yes, it does. Dramatically, actually. There's far more first dosers than second. I can't That's, remember exactly, but I, it might even be like, I don't want to guess because I don't no, it want to it doesn't. Right. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it's also just logical. Necessarily, second yeah. doses will be fewer than the first. The only question is in what proportion. If it's statistically significant, the fact that you would then have this will be fewer than the first. The only question is in what proportion. If it's statistically significant, the fact that you would then have this yeah. clear, right. clear trend of a statistically uh lesser amount of second doses that makes it even more shocking and then you see the blue i mean i don't know who's getting third doses anyhow you yeah. know holy crap know. And the, the, and, uh, okay all right the number is hold on adverse events i mean i'm just trying to like i'm trying to just trying to find a way to uh play I know, I know. It's and hard, minimize right? it. how can how can you debunk this <laughs> So the number, the number here we're at adverse events is what, what is the, is it thousands on the left or is it? No, this know? is total number. So this is bare bones, domestic data, not foreign data, only myocarditis. And it's, it's like, I, I, I narrowed the query to be very, very strict, which makes the number look very low. And there's well, no that's under gonna, this is eight, this is 80 reports. 80. Yes. Okay. And so people so again, are going to say, the total number of reports here, let's just say. Following those two reported to VAERS for myocarditis in 15 year old boys, that's not, that's not enough to worry about, but that's not the point. The pattern is the point. There's two important things about this graph and it has nothing to do with the absolute counts. It has to do with the dosing phenomenon and the age. And those yeah, two things, they, they, they signify something going on immunologically or physiologically in those in that age group and following dose two, which also satisfies Bradford Hill criteria for specificity and temporality. Yeah, the, but the argument is going to be, let's just say uh, of the of the 12 years from 12 to 24, well, let's just say at most is going to be a thousand cases. Well, we've we've administered it to uh, 70. Let's just 
Yeah, 50 million kids. So fine, it's, it's showing a statistically significant um, trend on a statistically insignificant blip. Move on. What are you complaining about? That's 80 yeah, cases. I would we, say, we... Yeah, I would say my kid's not a blip, asshole. Like, not to you, but that's what I would say to someone who's making that argument. The thing about these data is that they're they're not they're not only people they're they're little kids. <laughs> well, I mean, just revert revert to the under the statistical underreporting, the necessary underreporting, and this number could be as high as eight hundred. It could be as high yeah. as eight thousand, and that's of one of one demographic for something which would never have put them in the hospital in the first place. Or, or, the, thing, or... The, the, the thing that you're saying right now is fact. This, this, that's why I'm saying the absolute count doesn't matter here, really, because this is only, it's like the, the, the magnitude could be anything, but the pattern is going to remain the same. Yeah. And, and so, like, you're absolutely right. I mean, the underreporting factor could be a, a hundred. Uh, it could be this, this, this actually, if you added, for example, pericarditis and myopericarditis or versions of myocarditis, this could spike into the well, ten thousands, and, and that's that it could spike into the ten thousands at the underreported level. I mean, so the, yeah. this is why, hypothetically, it could be a hundred times, and not even hypothetically, but like logically and predictably, a hundred yep. times more. So you would have what is eighty times a hundred? It's eight thousand. You would have eight thousand cases of myocarditis alone for fifteen-year-old boys. And we need, I, I, I need to get someone to pull out the numbers as to the prognosis for myocarditis diagnosis in terms of lifespan, but. Okay, so, but, but one thing is for certain, as you uh, astutely point out, the relevant thing is here, the medical, scientific, biological correlation uh, trend following between the second dose and myocarditis. Okay. And so, like, you know, if they were another, I, I don't usually, um, uh, I think it's called the, the, the steel man uh, myself, but, like, if, if I was going to, let's just say I was working for them, okay? And I had to come up with ways to, like, if, if I was, like, one of the people trying to justify this data and make people not worry about it, I would say, well, maybe what we can do to satisfy people's worries or concerns is just not give the, the, the children, male, male, male children, let's say, a second dose. You know what I mean? It's like there's always, there's, there's something they could have said that at least would have acknowledged this data. But that's the point. This data, until this this paper got published, has not been acknowledged. It's oh. actually been suppressed. Jess, um, have you done this correlation? I mean, I don't know what other vaccines are administered in in, in doses. Um, I don't think the flu shot is. You don't take two doses of that, uh, even, even during any flu season. Have you tried to correlate uh, other vaccines that are administered to children or the same age bracket in doses to see what the correlation would be? Um, are you are you asking me if I've looked at other vaccine products? Yeah. Other, other, other vaccine products that are administered in doses where you could compare just to show uh, hypothetical. I mean, I don't even know what other vaccines are administered in doses. Uh, Smallpox? Um, trying to think I of think, them. No, but uh, maybe hepatitis. So um, if, you, if, if you do a, a comparison between any other vaccine, I, I, I'm not even still calling this one a vaccine, but, but any other vaccine to see what yeah. the... I, I don't think it, you're going to see it. I haven't, but it's a good idea. I don't think you're going to see it because the, the conventional vaccines aren't operating as the same. As the, the mRNA. Like, most of these reports are coming from the modified uh, mRNA products, right? Because most of the people in the States got the Pfizer or the Moderna. Like there are Novavax and Janssen products out there. Yeah, well, they, they, pull, they, they pulled the Johnson & Johnson in Canada, I think, after the 46-year-old woman died yeah. of blood clots. So, yeah, they pulled. there's no data on that because they pulled it. <laughs> yeah. So, like, exactly. And so the mechanism of action here is obviously the problem, as you saw in the other figures. So I, I'm not sure that you're going to get... Um, no, you, you, won't, you will not get the same correlation, predictably, yeah. but it might still be useful to show. Yeah, something is but uniquely... All, you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, lack of uh, evidence is also evidence. So th the thing that I did check, though, was this phenomenon, this pattern... For any other adverse event, and guess how many I found that had the same pattern? Uh, no. uh, more, n none. None. So I mean, I didn't check all fourteen thousand, but I did check the biggies, and I didn't see this. So it's like it's kind of a phenomenon that's um, unique to myocarditis, which which is kind of fascinating when you think about it. I mean. 
there's I, I imagine it has something to do with androgens, like the the male hormones that are linked to like puberty and stuff. But and I'm sure there are people doing work on this. But this is another thing. It's oh, like so we'll, get the, we'll get the data. Well, we'll get the we'll get those answers in 75 years. So oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll uh, all be. <laughs> oh, do, you have, do do I uh, should I go back? Is there there are more there are more graphs in here? Should we go yeah, back? Just, to the... Let me see what else is there. I, sh I should probably know. That. <laughs> um, okay, it's so what been we got here? Three years, anyway. Yeah. No, but so I, well, just... it's, it's been three years, buddy. You got three years more data. Oh, various really? reports of cardiac adverse yeah. events as of okay. So this is just cardiac uh, as as a cluster. So I, I I put this in because I wanted to show people that. It, you know, myocarditis is like one adverse event in the cluster of cardiac related adverse events. There's like thousands of them. So um, this gives you a better idea of the absolute number. This on the left is the absolute counts per age group of people. Mm -hmm. that's, reporting. A, that's a lot. That's a lot of numbers. And this is not under reporting and this is not definitive. I mean, or comprehend, like it's comprehensive, but it's not. Um, there's no way I could have included all of the measure codes for cardiac related events. So I just picked like the big ones, you all know, right. like, and this is, this is as of the first date of administration of the, of, of the, yeah, of the jab yeah, okay. from the beginning. And this is normalized on the right. So you can see that most of the people who are reporting cardiac stuff are uh, the, the older people. It starts around 25, which isn't old, but like, you know what I mean? Like, um, but again, this is as of August 11th, so who knows what's happened since then? Maybe more kids, because they've been giving it out to more kids, have reported. I guarantee you that that's true. And now I'm trying to think of the steel man to to counter this would be the argument of um, have you checked overall incidence of cardiac issues to see if it correlates if it's on the increase or if there's an if there's um, a market increase in cardiac incidents, not various related but aggregate. I don't even know how you'd find that data post COVID jab. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't know. I, I imagine that, uh, you know, another. No, no, I was going to say, we, we've, we've heard reports about it. And then, and then people say, well, excess death is not up excess uh, heart. Could, I mean, that would be, uh, I mean, I, I'm sure Ed Dowd would actually have that data or um, uh, Baudouin, John Baudouin, who yeah. you know, you'd have to get the hospital John records Baudouin. to see. Okay, that would be interesting to correlate. Uh, now I go down a lot of talky talky, and uh, that's it. Conclusion. Let's yeah, don't read that. <laughs> why not? I w why? Just don't read the last sentence. Um, yeah, it, it, it kind of refers to like, uh, it was a sentence that was thrown in to get it published, and uh, it kind of refers to like keeping. Oh, God, stop it, you. And we found a very strong safety signal for COVID-19 vaccine-induced myocarditis, particularly in children and young adults, that results in hospitalization or death. Did we miss the death, um, the death graph? And I don't mean to, that sounds very sinister. Where, where was the chart? I graphic? don't think there is a death graph, if, if memory recalls, because it's 3%. And it's like, it's not really a graph that's going to be like, <gasps> you know, so yeah. I, I, you can have a limited number of figures in your... Um, in your publication and you kind of want it to be like, you know, the ones that are irrefutable. So, you know, it, it would probably be another way for them to say, yo, so what? But it's well, like- I'm, I'm gonna ask uh, Bodwin and Dowd and or Dowd for the- um, Like I, the I, overall I, cardiac related by age Overall group. cardiac related and also, holy crap, how am I gonna ask them if I just forgot what I was gonna ask them? Oh, the uh, lifespan, <laughs> lifespan pro someone in the chat, take a note of this because I'm gonna forget. The lifespan prognosis once you're diagnosed <laughs> with myocarditis. That, that's the, that is the most important thing where we've been told it's mild. Cardiologists will tell you it's probably like on average 10 years, but it's really hard to ascertain. But here's the thing, this is just common sense. The younger you are, and especially if you're prepubescent when you're still developing, uh, if you sustain heart damage, like in, with regard to fibro fibrotic scarring, it, it, it's not hard to guess that it's going to reduce your lifespan. Like maybe we don't know exactly by how much, but 